Well, thank you everyone for joining another episode of the Cork Workplace Talks. I'm excited today to have a friend of mine join us, and that's Kyle Gellenbeck, who is the Director of Projects and Development Services for Cushman Wakefield, uh, really for the, the state of Arizona, is how I say it. Um, so Kyle, thank you so very much for joining, and uh, I just wanted to wish you a super congratulations for uh, getting married just a couple of days ago. So welcome to that life adventure. Thank you very much. I appreciate having me. This is great. Yeah. Uh, so let's just start with um, the state of the market in Phoenix. Uh, I was out there not too long ago and met with you, and there are just so many things going on. The WeWork location was busy, buildings being built, uh, all kinds of events just in the United States are focused on, on Phoenix. So what are some of the highlights that you all and your team are seeing uh, when it comes to real estate? Yeah, I, I think it's it's interesting for my position in in a project and development services way, right? Um, we're a, obviously a large brokerage, uh, a, a brokerage uh, team as as in Kishner and Wakefield. But um, on my side, project wise, our I think it's the trend in the last five years, certainly through COVID has shifted a lot of our business towards um, the industrial side of the house. We have a, a very solid industrial team um, that's in Cushman and Phoenix. And that is where actually the, most of our revenue has, has come from um, in manufacturing facilities, standing up first generation spaces, second generation spaces um, that's turned into not much vacancy um, in the industrial market. So even, even tenant improvement projects, things like that on the industrial side have been rare because of the vacancy. Um, I think trend-wise here, certainly in the next year or two, there's a lot of product coming online, um, certainly with the advantageous lending and interest rate practices. I, I think there's there's going to be plenty of product between build to suit and, um, um, and uh, shelf space available, and that's the industrial side. So, um, that will kind of, I think that's going to really shift. I think some some deals are going to be made. I think there's going to be certainly that uh, it's going to be more of a tenant driven market versus versus a landlord driven market. Um, I and then really being that that the focus, uh, as you probably are, are aware, uh, office is you few projects and far between. That's for sure. I know our office team has been very slow, and the projects that we do get are um, on the tenant side are potentially consolidations, they're downsizing, they're uh, maybe maybe more quality to try to you know get people back into the office. So certainly the flight to quality in the office space is, is still there, um, but I think the call center environment, those kind of the sea of workstations for 200,000 square feet is, uh, I, I think that's gonna be a real challenge. And then what do you do with those assets? So. Um, that I, and that's certainly not unique to Phoenix. I think we're seeing that pretty much everywhere. But, um, but that's that's kind of the current <laughs> how I see it, at least from our project side. Um, manufacturing uh, is still still very very robust. Um, our the huge influx of companies in and support um, support companies between TSMC coming here. Um, that being announced between the fab locations, Intel expanding, um, data center work that's happening in the Southeast Valley, and then a large distribution um, a distribution center and logistics effort out on the west side of, the, of Phoenix in the Valley is is still very substantial. So there's a lot of work to be to you know to be had, but um, certainly a little slower I think of the last year and then into this year. So we'll kind of see how it continues, but um, that's at least how, from my view, um, kind of what's happening. Yeah, no, that's a great summary. Um, it's it's wonderful, I would think, to be in a, a market where there is so much activity. It, it isn't on yeah. the office, but still, you know, uh, great for the community. Um, what what are, are I mean, what are some of the reasons that companies are moving to Phoenix out of other other markets? Is it because the industrial like it's a hub in a way? Yeah, it, it, they've they've really pushed for that. Um, the, the growth on the west side alone, um, and I say west side is in West Valley of Phoenix. So your Glendale, Surprise, Peoria, uh, Buckeye, Goodyear, those those areas um, have have seen tremendous growth. Um, they've they've pushed for the three hundred three expansion. So that's that's happened, and, and that still is basically connecting the North Valley where TSMC is 
down to the Southwest Valley where I-10, you know, goes out to California. So we're seeing a lot of the companies moving from California. They don't nece necessarily need to be right next to a port. Um, they can have a, a day drive for their logistics operations and still have success in Phoenix. You've got uh, a good, robust labor market. Um, you've got high tech or uh, quality high tech jobs, um, especially with the, the um, expansions of Intel and, and then now TSMC coming here. And then all the support and all the subsidiary businesses that are going to be um, uh, coming in behind those two, uh, two major, major um, companies. I think we're just, I think we're very well positioned. I think it's just, it helps. You don't have a ton of natural disasters, if you will. It's hot. <laughs> we know Phoenix <laughs> is uh, warm in the summertime, but in reality, it's it's doable and it's and it's manageable. Um, you just get some summer storms, but short of that, it's, you know, not an earthquake seismic zone. You're not in any of those kind of, uh, those kind of issue areas. But um, yeah, I, I think the, the labor market helps. Um, tax advantages, things like that are, are, are all, um, are all are all there in, in Arizona and Phoenix specifically. Yeah, I, lo I love visiting. I love visiting out there. It's nice to be in a, an environment where economic situation feels good because there are markets across the country where that's not really the case. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and we've got, you know, as you know, our, our resources nationally, um, even globally, you, you, you hear from the other markets. We're a part of the West um, in Arizona, and then more specifically, we're in the Southwest. So we hear from all the other market leaders, and and it it is unique. Uh, I think Phoenix is pretty well positioned, and it has been since really the early start of COVID and and some of the the issues that we've seen from that. So um, I think that that has certainly helped Arizona at least be a little more focused and you know on national attention. So for sure. So if I ask you about your your day to day leadership role in project management, what are what are some of the high points or the things that you really love about your job that maybe our listeners aren't, aren't aware of that project management teams uh, oversee, and especially you and your team? Sure. Um, we so I've got four that report to me um, and our team here in Phoenix out of seven. Um, our Southwest team, I believe, uh, between. Denver and Salt Lake City, um, Vegas, those areas are all, I think we've got 11, I believe. Um, so we, we've got a good collective group of experiences uh, and, and backgrounds that make up our entire team. I, I love working with them. I think it's very fun. We we have a very diverse background. Um, we've got team members coming from the subcontractor world. We've got team members come from the general contracting world. Um, we've got architects. We've got um, a really a really wide range of backgrounds that our team is comprised of. So to get to be able to pick up the phone and ask about a specific challenge or something with a project and they've went through it and they've been through it hundreds of times, you know, that's always advantageous for us. Um, so certainly the people uh, is our, is my, is my favorite part. I still, I, you know, in my role, it's still a player coach situation. So I'm still managing projects um, as part of my both business development effort and leadership role, but I still like running projects. They're a lot of fun and, and usually they're very challenging and they start increasing as you as you get more experience in size, scale and complexity. Uh, so all those things are very fun um, and, and you get to do all of it, which is which is even better. Some stuff <laughs> is more fun than others, but um, but no, sure. certainly the people I think is most importantly. And then still getting to manage projects is great. That's a lot of fun. That That's great to hear. I think keeping your your hand in what you're doing is important. And yeah. then you are on top of that, that how we play the game is completely changing too. And so right. probably have, having that, uh, the strong Cushman um, uh, talent base is great for to help us all right. explore the way. Because ultimately at the end of the day, you're supporting your customers. And, and um, right. in fact, in fact, um, Marcus Tate, who is the president of uh, corporate environments in Atlanta was the guest on the podcast the other day, uh, a large, Miller Knoll dealership in Atlanta, and he was talking about how one of the things that he's seen change so much is the um, elevation of the commercial real estate companies taking the lead on projects. Uh, the A and D firms are still there, and of course the dealers are still there. Port is still there in the conversation, but really the uh, project management groups uh, are taking more of a lead. I, I thought that was interesting right. because. We, we certainly see that at court. Um, yeah. And so, Bravo, do you do you interface much with the furniture world 
or someone on your team or because it's industrial so much, not as much? Uh, just with my own experience and especially in the last four or so years, I, we interact with furniture teams all the time. Um, and some of them are good friends of ours, right? I mean, they're all, they're all, uh, I mean, we, we RFP to all of them. We manage the entire process They They integrate into our drawings and every single project in, in, and I know you mentioned the industrial piece, but even then there is some type of furniture component that's typically going into their offices, whether that is a small spec suite that's managing a large distribution center. That's one thing, but, um, but it, it, regardless, you still have furniture requirements in any case. And then we've, you know, myself, including our team has I've worked on very complex office class a office projects that that integrate um every aspect of furniture into into the design and and obviously the fit out so um yeah we interact with with our dealers and stuff all the time and um and then and then certainly know them know them very well which is which is always advantageous yes that's that's just another um you know talent on the team and and uh one of the responsibilities i i was given at the beginning of this year was to uh, support our furniture dealer partnerships at court. And uh, I've been talking to a lot of people and we're seeing just this natural intersection of clients buying most of their furniture, but keeping a part of it that's that's flexible for a variety of of use cases, basically. Um, So I I don't know that we're seeing that in Phoenix as much, but in some of our markets, it really is elevating. And I think that will continue to happen as we see uh, companies requesting a reuse strategy into RFPs and and into um, to stakeholders wanting to see circularity and sustainability at the forefront of of the workplace. And I was Absolutely. just wondering if you yeah. could see that. Yeah, and I certainly on the shorter term leases, things that we're seeing on short term renewals, spec suites, any kind of uh, I would say a, a, the shorter end of that, and then having some type of flexibility in the longer term leases for their ancillary spaces, um, conference room flexibilities, things like that, that are, they're all very different in how each client operates. Um, we, we see a lot of that. Uh, definitely. It's, and so I am, I'm kind of excited to see a little bit more of it happen. Certainly planning for the future versus let's get in day one. And then everyone's saying, well, we've already changed our operations. <laughs> and so we yeah. need to change our entire <laughs> furniture strategy, which, which does happen. Uh, and that's, it's day one on move in and they realize, well, maybe that didn't work. So. No, there's there's no question. In fact, uh, talking to some of my colleagues, more and more of the uh, A and D um, leaders that are out and about at networking events and so forth are coming up to us and saying, you know, tell us a little bit more about this circular model at court. And that's good because there was a day when that didn't really happen. But I think just the way sure. we work along with sustainability issues is is really driving interest in it. Um, and, that, and that is that is a that is a constant question now, um, basically with every client. What's the state sustainability practice? This how much waste we're using? Are we going to the lead a lead version of this building? Are are we going to attempt to, um, you know, certify a lot of this stuff based on sustainability? It, it's in every conversation at this point. In almost every conversation I think we have with clients. So yeah, it's a, that's a big part of it. Excellent, excellent. Um... I was just going to ask you if you're seeing space being used differently. Uh, that's a little bit harder question when there's a, a, a real focus on on industrial, I think. But in some of the, in some of our market with Richman teams, we're seeing just the change of how the office is being used. Any thoughts on that? It is, I think, in what we've seen, uh, kind of like I said earlier, right? Is the call center environments? I, I, if I have the option to work from home and be just as productive um, and I don't go sit in a sea of workstations, I, I, I get, that's my personal opinion, right? Um, I'm not going to be as tempted to go back to the office as I maybe normally would. So I think the flight to quality is, uh, is huge. So changing the environment in the office for nice amenitized spaces, um, even if it is a consolidated square footage, that's one thing. And then you can have a hybrid work structure. Uh, that that seems to be probably where you know and, and is probably already happening is where the way the, the, you know the the trend um, is going here, especially in Phoenix. But um, yeah, I think it's I think it's be, being proud of the place you're walking into, and you know you're being um, requested to go back in. You're going to be more and in, more inclined to spend time there if it's a much uh, if it's a nicer space and it's got more amenities and it's 
uh, more collaborative in nature and then 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 the alternative which i think we're, we'll all call it maybe a pre-covid scenario so with good air conditioning too out there <laughs> that's right <laughs> yes that's right funny enough it's always warmer it's always warmer in the winter time in our offices and then colder in the summertime i don't know tell me how that works but uh clearly our <laughs> systems are decent but it's funny um can you put your finger on any of uh, the unique challenges that project managers in, uh, like, in, in your team face? I would say, especially in the last four years, uh, material and, and lead time challenges. I mean, it is, and cost, obviously. It's the two things. It's procurement and and the increase in cost. Uh, it. I think in the first first year or so in, of 2020, um, you know, kind of that entire calendar year, it was even getting clients, team members, brokers, everyone to understand how quickly the market had changed based on dollar a foot that you're going to spend for either a spec suite for landlords or a tenant build out that they're going to have to pay out of pocket for. And it was a shock for everybody. Um, I, I mean, I don't know the exact percentages and numbers off the top of my head here, but uh this is it's a significant increase and i think that those conversations were very very difficult and they still are to some degree i think it's just more well known at this stage um clients understand because their business has changed their business you know their costs have increased so they understand that you know this is a similar scenario um but that that by far and then, and then still we're we're dealing with similar procurement challenges um you know mechanical and electrical gear those things are still a problem um, you had over the course of these last four years, you had every every week it felt like something either had a significant premium to cost or it had a delayed lead time that was not known the previous week. And and there's only if you think about it in certain scenarios, there's only a few manufacturers in the entire country that do that make specific things. So you you've got a massive market and influx of of projects that are coming back online that are moving forward. And only a few manufacturers to be able to support it. They can't even get their own products to be able to assemble and then ship out um, to these job sites. So that created some some major challenges. That made our job obviously much harder. And I think everyone in this scenario, including our general contractors, architects, engineers, all um, all have now had to play kind of the we, we all design, assist, we all design, build it kind of together as a big team now. When in reality, you know, previously all we had to do was send out a set of plans you hard bid it, you hard bid it to three general contractors and you move forward um that i think is those are so few and far between these days because of the procurement and cost uh challenges we've seen and it's just uh, it's advantageous to a point but it also um it feels like this you know the competitive nature kind of um you got your uh, that's just a different different uh it's a different realm now at this point Hard to say, I guess, but it just feels like it's a completely different market and management structure and how we yeah. how we you know, manage projects. So, well, that is a big change. And do you find that uh, the tenants, landlords, and such that they might say we're going to delay decisions because of cost oh, yeah. or? Okay, so you you probably have That's a nice type a bit. of 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 people, you know, <clears throat> waiting and yeah, so. That's exactly right. And it's it, it's come to, uh, we don't want to spend that kind of money right now. Let's wait a year. It, and that's certainly on the landlord side, the owner rep side. Those are the decisions on, you know, completing spec suites and trying to drive some traffic. It's you know, into the building. Uh, for tenants, it's they don't want to pay anything out of pocket because costs are so are so much higher now. Um, yeah. And so it's it's just del it's just del it's delayed decisions, to your point. And it's happened very consistently and it's unfortunate just because um some projects are really exciting and then they yeah. inevitably go on hold which is which is a real bummer for us and our team but we we understand it it's unfortunately there's only so much we can do it's 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 our world right now and i know furniture just one little piece of that but court really brings some value for companies that are kind of not sure what they're going to do delaying decisions right. don't want to commit anything and and um, you know that's just right our sweet spot but like you said there's a lot more to these projects you're talking about than just the furniture component um right 
So let's see. Um, are, are you finding your customers asking you about solutions for circularity or reuse or sustainability? I mean, I know you said it's mentioned all the time, but specifically, do you see tenants and, and landlords talking about it? Yeah, I think so. And I think probably the most prevalent area for that has been around building out spec suites, having, um, you know, bringing in a tenant that's going to be there maybe on a shorter term basis. And then that's how that gets introduced. Um, it, it, it's been few and far between at the moment, but I actually see that that actually being a probably a greater trend longer term for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I was talking to a broker one time and he said, I was just trying to get it to the head of this particular landlord that <laughs> two year leases was the same as one 10 year lease that you have to wait forever to find. And yeah. it's, it's true, you know, some of the landlords are accustomed to, to doing business a certain way. But as the uh, tenants want a different experience, they really need to consider the shorter term opportunities is really what they are. Absolutely. Um, right. It gives it, it gives them another flexible option. It's got, that's, that's kind of going back to the same theme of it's short term renewals. It's finding uh, a consolidated space for, um, you know, for their, for their organization in a short term way, or it, it's a buffer amount of time for them to make a probably more longer term decision. It, it just, that is that is almost every conversation, especially in an office sense uh, that we've had yep. with both owners and tenants and stuff in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Do you find do you find uh, this is more maybe on the brokerage question, but companies looking towards flexible space co working as part of their decision making? Like, is that does that come into the, to the conversations? Do you think? I I don't know if I can speak to that directly, but just especially on the brokerage side, but um, I know that, you know, those are, those are, again, those are stop gaps um, in between a, probably a longer term decision. And I know there's, there's a, a good market for both you know, those kind of options, those flexible options in Phoenix. So that it wouldn't surprise me if that's, that's in, that's probably happening more often than not. That, that That's a really good answer. It, it was kind of a tough question, but we're, we're seeing just um, like you said, it's a stop gap in some situations and others. Um, you know, the brokers themselves are putting people into co-working companies, you know, because that's going to solve the problem for the moment. Sure. Um, right. So speaking of brokerage, like, are you supporting them much? Is, is Are you, like, do you go on pitches and things of that nature? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it, um, some, if not most, of our businesses are by referral within our organization. Um, we also operate as our own service line anyway, so we can, you know, we, we take on third party work as well. Um, but no, it's it, it, for us, um, we that's we're obviously set up as a support for a service line, you know, as an extension of the deals, um, whether whether we're actually either whether we actually win or whether we are included based on a referral. Um, you know, yes, we we go into pitches, we are engaged, we provide our decks, bios. Um, interviews we we do all of that stuff with the clients uh nearly hand in hand essentially to you know with within the deal um it just it just depends on the deal it depends on the complexity again and and also depends on the broker and how you know they run their client relationship and how they like to manage the the communication that also is 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 different for everybody and sure. it really ultimately depends on the client i mean it just their setup and their um you know what they're actually looking for and are we, you know, is it a big competing um, everyone interviews and the award of project management firm? Are we added as a service line as a part of the deal? It just depends. Um, it really does based on what the client, client needs. That, I like that. Um, so two things. One is what what is your favorite part of your job? And I, I'm going to see if I guessed it right after you tell me. And then, uh, and then in a minute, any predictions you have for the next years? Uh, what, what, what was the second question? Sorry. What prediction you have for the workplace, say, looking five years out? Well, favorite part of my job. Um, it's a good question. I, lo I love the, I would say this, the small net community 
that's a part of this commercial real estate world. I think that's the most fun because you do get to meet so many good people and have a, had a lot of, lot of fun doing it. There's always an event. There's always something going on, plenty of golf, all that, all those good things. Yeah. Um, especially with, you know, clients and being able to really interact with anyone and everyone is, is, is a lot of fun. And then you get to meet a lot of great people. Um, predictions for the workplace. I can, I, I think that the long-term, the long-term stretch for, for people in office uh, and the companies bringing people back to the office is going to be highly amenitized. It's going to be, it's collaborative in nature. It's got some, it's got nice features. It's nice. There's some, there, it's in a great location, probably walkable to some other amenities in the area. Um, I, and I'm, and I'm given, I'm, I guess I'm being a little selfish here because it's our own setup that we have in our business, in our <laughs> office in Phoenix, um, at the Esplanade, but, uh, and they're doing a, a large renovation, a uh, huge amenitized reno renovation of the whole complex right now. So the, the money is being spent on those types of properties that are in great locations. And I, that will certainly continue. Um, but individually within the spaces themselves, it's about collaboration. It's about being as a team and, and it ultimately depends on the business and how they, um, you know, how they, how they vision or view that long-term, uh, the company. So hopefully yeah. that answers your question. It, it does. I was going to guess that your favorite part was working on projects because your, your, your face lit up a lot when you, when you talked about that. Hard one. Well, of course, I one. love the projects. Yes, I love the projects. But um, meeting the people, I think, is probably more. It's probably more important in general. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, if if anyone listening uh, wants to to get a hold of you, reach out on LinkedIn. Is that a good way to to connect? Or we'll, we'll put your a blog that we'll share with this too. Uh, I just think it's yeah. great for hosting these. Um, these talks so that we can help our customer base understand what's happening in different roles in commercial real estate and the furniture dealer world, and then also connect with them, um, you know, hopefully connect with you. Absolutely. So, yeah. LinkedIn's great. Um, I, yeah, no, and this is my uh, full disclosure here. This is my first podcast. So hopefully, hopefully I did. Okay. But no, I really did, appreciate it. This has, this has been fun. You did great. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, you just got married, but the most exciting part is next week you go on your honeymoon. So uh, that's, that's correct. the start of a new life and uh, super, super exciting. So thank you, Kyle, very much for taking a few minutes out to chat. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks. Okay. Have a great weekend. You too.